Guys, I am really looking forward uh, to wrapping up um, Faith and Fellowship Part 2 Community. Um, as we had the opportunity a few weeks ago to share uh, from the Word of God uh, this invitation uh, to, to really pursue, to lean in to God's heart, God's vision, God's desire for community, for fellowship. Uh, there's a, a few more things that we wanted to make sure we made available to the people. And uh, so right now we are going to unpack what would have really been the second half of the panel from um, a few a few weeks ago, a couple Sundays ago. And I love this section because these questions really allow you guys uh, to share your personal experiences, uh, to bring people into what it's looked like for you to fight for, for community and, and, and why you've continued to fight for, for community, even when it's been hard, even when you've uh, been disappointed, when you've been let down. Um, you're going to be able to share today what you've gained from community. What are the benefits and the blessings uh, that, that you have gained? Uh, we're going to talk about how do we heal um, after we've been hurt um, in, in community, in the church specifically, and uh, end with this, this picture of, of what we see for the future of our spiritual family, the local church, Garden City. So again, I'm really looking forward to this, and we're going to jump right in. Let's let's pray and invite the Lord, and then we'll, we'll lean into uh, this conversation this morning. So Lord, we welcome you. Lord, we thank you for uh, the gift of technology. Uh, Lord, to be able to make this second half of the panel um, on community available to uh, to our church, Lord, we just ask that you would come. Yes. Holy Spirit, would you reveal Jesus, the, the worth of Jesus, the beauty of Jesus, the heart of Jesus. May, may we be fueled and, and energized by the beauty of Jesus as we continue to pursue community together, knowing that your blood, your cross, your resurrection, it, it purchased, it made available for us. Uh, Lord, the expectation and hope uh, that we have for community. God bless these panelists. Thank you again uh, for their willingness, Lord, uh, to share from their actual lives. And, and may it impact the hearts of every person who hears um, as we continue to move forward together. We love you, Lord, and we give you the praise. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 So we've got Lauren Murphy, my amazing wife. We've got Haley Andrews, uh, Gabriel Rodriguez, and Christopher Ledesma. Uh, we're going to jump right into this. As we talk about community, you know, one of the things that I would love for you guys to share is just, you know, what has kept you fighting for community, um, even when it's been difficult, even when it's been hard, what was it that really you know, got you to the place of saying, you know what, I'm going to keep pressing in. I'm going to keep fighting for uh, just what God desires for community, even after a difficult season. Lauren, would you start uh, for us this morning? Yeah. Yeah. When I think about community and being God's heart and full design, I just love that it's an actual place that when we say yes to passing and pressing past like surface level um relationships with brothers and sisters it really is a place that we can take our masks off and we can't hide when community is done well and pure it's really just an opportunity for us to be together to go deeper with each other and to have relationships where God you see the fullness of God being made known in them and in ourselves and so I think that community is just it's so um it's one of the greatest gifts and one of the greatest tools that I think the Lord has given us. And it's it's a, a really important for the church, I think, in the, this time specifically, that if we can't get community right and if we don't live out community, I feel like there's going there won't be a bride. There won't be a unified bride to actually yeah, usher in yeah. God. And that is the heart of community. It is our assignment. Um, and I just love that the Lord has given us a gift like community. And so it's worth fighting for. Amen. Amen. Haley, share with us just kind of what you've been thinking through with this question. Uh, when I think of um, what has made what has made me willing to fight for community, um, I really go back to Song of Songs 5 to the, the, the latter part of the Lord asking, like, open deeper still to me. Um, I feel like the, the personal sacrifice piece of community 
has been something that the Lord and I have bared with, with each other a lot, because I think that it makes it difficult when people are consistently in need of wholeness. It's one of the most beautiful places of watching the Lord refine people and then become like him. But there's a whole other aspect of uh, a need for wholeness that impacts people and can leave brokenness um, on the other side. And so I think it it makes it worth fighting when Jesus reveals his prayers for the people that have hurt us and having faith to know that he is our keeper and not those who have hurt us. I think it keeps us from being stuck there while honestly processing our emotions. Um, and I think what has kept me in a space of fighting for it is that community is the will of God. And I have to sit in his presence to become, to give my yes to it. Um, and he desires that I be in community. I think that's something that he and I have had to sit with a lot of regardless of pain, regardless of doubt, of anger, anything that can come up when you sit in his presence and it rips up your heart, those don't become, um, but I can't do that. Like they don't become justifications for not. They become where I realize his desire and my like lack of faith to kind of jump in. Um, but then I get to sit with him and remember that his will goes over and um, consumes all of what my will would be to surrender. And so I think that it just becomes receiving his, seeing his worth and then receiving him as healer and trusting him with my soul that then lets me look at his will and go, I will fight for this regardless. Like I will open deeper still regardless of shadows and fears and has kept me fighting when it is hard or difficult. Love it. So practical, but yet it's, it's just, it's also fueled by something that can really only be um, seen and, and, you know, really grasped in the spirit. And we, we, we find each and every time it's, it's the beauty and worth of Jesus that keeps mm. us going. Yeah. Let's just keep this, let's just keep this going. I want to stay on this question. Um, so Christopher, would you share with us, what is it that has, you know, allowed you to fight for, for community, even yeah. after it's been harder than Gabriel, would you wrap us up with this first question? Yeah, so personally, I've experienced some pretty deep church hurt um, to the point where uh, investigators had to get involved. And it was on the news. Uh, I was actually sexually assaulted by a male in leadership over the course of a period of years. Um, wow. And then you have all the fallout that comes along with that. Um, and then even after that, entering a second community, where, um, you know, you just have normal life conflicts. We'll just put it that way. Um, and <clears throat> some of that hurt was obviously intentional. And then there were things that were unintentional in other community experiences. And as I think about those moments, I knew I had a choice to walk away or stay engaged. And what kept me fighting was the fear of the Lord and a commitment to the mission. And I'm obviously not saying that there's never a time to walk away. That first experience was one where I obviously had to walk away. Um, but sometimes uh, our feelings can cloud what God is trying to do and we give up too easily. Um, or we separate ourselves and we try to complete the mission of God on our own. And uh, the mission is too big for any one of us to try to do. And so it really does, we really are compelled by a love for God and love for the mission um, to stay. Thank you for sharing that, Christopher. I know, you know, just what you've been through personally is uh, something that no one, no one should ever have to go through, period, let alone in the church. And unfortunately, there's... Uh, I think a reality of of many in the body of Christ who have experienced uh, what you've experienced, and I'm really grateful that you know we're going to be able to talk about uh, really what the the process looks like to begin to heal from uh, just tragic hurt and and just betrayal, rejection, pain, um, and trauma that has been experienced in in the church. But I love what you said. It's it's love for God, love for the mission, and those two things never change. 
uh, the goodness of God, the worthiness of the mission, and just the, the role that they can play to keep us coming to the table, fighting for community. Thank you so much, Christopher. Uh, Gabriel, would you wrap us up with this first question? Absolutely. Uh, hello, everybody. Um, so what has kept me uh, fighting for community? So in the journey of, you know, being a Christian and, and being a disciple of Jesus, uh, I realized that Jesus gave value to friendship, family, and community. And so as I grow in my fellowship with him, and as I grow uh, in becoming more like him, I realized that these are things that he valued, just like Haley said, uh, it's his will, you know? And if Jesus being so busy and so famous made room to be with families, with friends, and with community, then I obviously have no excuse uh, to not make that important and and not take time to be intentional about that. So I think obedience and, and his heart um, keeps me in it for sure. I love that, the simplicity of it. You know, we sometimes um, lose sight of how, how powerful uh, the motivation of obedience can be and, and just committing to reflecting what we see in the life of Jesus, what he modeled, what he exemplified for us, and and just really desiring to embody that um, in our own lives. Um, I want to talk about just what what it looks like to heal, you know, and and I'm going to switch the, the order up. Hopefully you guys aren't surprised by that, but I kind of want to go back to Christopher, uh, just in what you shared. I just think it would be powerful for us to hear, you know, you're one of the people that I think about that inspires me that really, you know, has set the tone um, even for how I perceive uh, the, the the worth and the value of showing up in community and, and, you know, really contending for uh, God's heart, for, for the people of God, for the community of faith, um, knowing what you've been through, what you just shared with us, what did it look like uh, to go from that place of being hurt, being, you know, just just uh, completely let down by the church to being the pastor that you are today, that is arguably one of the greatest champions for the church, for community that I know. How did you heal? What what did that process look like? Yeah, thank you for letting me speak into that. Um, I would say the step one is that we have to separate the person or people from God. God did not hurt us, people hurt us. And when we have the two conflated and we shift some of that blame onto the Lord, we actually prevent him from coming in and doing the healing work. The second thing I would say is that we have to get rid of the phrase church hurt and call it for what it really is. It's people hurt. Uh, that's why I appreciate the way you phrased the question, um, because the church, the global church, did not hurt us. Um, there are specific individuals who did, and so there's never a need to separate ourselves um, from anything other than those groups of individuals or that particular individual. Um, so similar to shifting blame on God, it's not fair or healthy to shift blame onto the entire church for what an isolated group or individual did. Um, and when we do that, what we actually do is we build a wall between us and the church and we cut off, uh, similar to something Lauren said, we cut off one of the primary sources that God uses to heal and that's the body. Um, I think just even about, it's an unrelated scripture, but it gives us really good insight. It says to, uh, confess uh, your faults or your sins uh, to the Lord so that you can be forgiven, but you confess to the church to be healed. You go to God for forgiveness, but it's the church that brings healing. Yeah, I love how you make that distinction. It's not it's not God who hurt me. It's, it's people and it's individual groups of people. And even just understanding that we, um, we don't want to compound hurt by cutting us off from the very source of of God's plan and God's you know uh, desire to bring about restoration to bring about healing, which He does through the family of God, and 
I know that can be really challenging. Lauren, I'd like you to kind of pick up um, with this question. Uh, I know there's things that you've experienced even um, in leadership and just uh, the journey that we've been on in ministry that have really been challenging. What does it look like for for you to heal? How has it, you know, um, been to stay connected to the body, uh, knowing that in that environment, it's it's easy to be reminded of the pain that you went through. Um, but what what does that look like? What has your process been as you've navigated hurt um, in the church, Lord? You got to unmute yourself, babe. Thanks. Um, I love I love that I get to share into this because it's a, a special place to be able to say coming from a church and, you know, experiencing some church hurt, but then also pastoring from a position of people and helping people through that hurt, too. And so I asked the Lord how to handle the question, how to answer it. And I think I can speak to both because it was something that I had to walk through as well. Um, being able to give yourself permission to feel uh, the emotions and to process is really what I had to walk through. Um, I think a lot of times when you enter in a community, there can be a sense of um, how do we fix it? Let's just get past it quickly. Let's move into what you're gifted and talented at and let's just put you you know, in a role and that, that happens quickly. Um, because I think that those are also on God's heart. And so I think sometimes when in community that I've experienced um, just such fast pace that I actually didn't get permission to sit and take the time necessary to process my feelings and to work through those um, and to actually acknowledge that they're there and they're OK to be there um, for myself. And then to 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 actually go with the Lord and make the decision and say, OK, Daddy, you father me now to give my yes to continue to show up. Um, and so for me personally, and then also pastoring people, that is what I'm so intentional on with just giving people the space um, and and to meet them where they're at, to work through and process with them, but then also to help them see that the Lord wants to father them uh, to that. I love what you said. You, you use an important word, the decision. To, to process yeah. this with the Lord. And when I think about healing, you know, it's easy to kind of pass through some of these examples, even in the ministry of Jesus, but he asked the question, do you want to be made well? Yes. And and we, we can read that and, and sometimes even scratch our head. Like what a, what an obvious question. Of course I want to be made well, uh, but mm -hmm. we know Jesus doesn't ask anything without a, a reason. And it's, it's, it's a question that we have to be confronted with, no matter what the source of the pain is, if it's, you know, hurt because of community or because of it, whatever it may be. I think that that's a huge part of the process, making the decision to move towards healing, to move towards restoration, um, even in, in light of being hurt in, in the church and community. Um, really value what you shared there. Haley, would you kind of walk us through what that's looked like for you? What is it? Uh, look like in your journey to make the decision to heal, um, even in the context of community? Yeah, uh, I'm going to piggyback off of Lauren a lot in it. Um, you know, I think for me, it has looked like Garden City was a kind of a, we use the phrase like smack in the face of looking at the Lord to make a decision. Um, in the beginning planting of Garden City, I had a friend pass away and it came out of a space of the first community I had ever known and people are beautiful and people have really good intentions, but life is messy, especially when you're in pain of something like that happening. Um, and so it was coming into garden city and being okay with the Lord asking me to give myself permission to, to process. I like, you know, there's been many conversations of people on this call of, the Lord asking me to lay everything down and let him reintroduce himself um, to be safe with him again, to feel my emotions, to process those things. And it, I think it's really beautiful that it can look like doing it in community can look like doing it with a lot of people around the table and it can look like three people around the table. And it was really beautiful that healing for me was less people, but it still demanded that I process with individuals the way the Lord was introducing his character and the way that I was processing myself. Um, but he really pulled me out 
of of the go, 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 of leadership, of exciting, let's plan a church, of look at the faithfulness of the Lord, which he was, and it was true, but my heart needed something else. And, and his consistency of being father, being healer, um, really pulled me out to put me back together in his character. And so healing just looked like diving into who he is. There would be an emotional outburst and he would introduce himself in that. And, and it was a back and forth, a give and take of that. And really realizing that accepting healthy parts of hurtful community is okay. Um, I think that when we accept the parts of Jesus in a place or in a situation that felt so crushing that we still get to have the fullness of him. We leave him behind when we just say it was all bad because we had a bad emotional experience. Um, but when our emotions don't tell us something was all bad, we get to pull the truth of him with us and really heal and, and keep what he meant and not let the enemy steal and destroy what he built um, to really stand on in healing. That is really powerful, but also very hard, all right, to be able to look at a situation that brought pain and say, okay, that moment or that incident doesn't get to define every part of that season. There were good things that came out of that season. There were deposits that I know were from the Lord that came out of that season and choosing to hold on to those while acknowledging the hurt, while acknowledging the pain so that we can heal. Uh, but not letting the devil steal everything that came from that former church or from that, you know, get, you know, again, that that community, the season that we may have experienced hurt um, as a piece of, but doesn't get to define the whole thing. I think that's so wise, uh, Haley, uh, Haley, and just also necessary for the healing to be able to see the good that came out of, um, you know, those past moments and not just the bad um, and I can say just as your brother um, and pastor, it's it's been such such an encouragement. I've gained so much hope uh, watching you navigate that up close, and uh, it's such a gift to this community. Um, just just you being in the room, having walked through that process with the Father, and just being able to be a resource for others. Uh, Gabriel, I would love for you to to just close out this this question before we move on and. And then I would actually like to spend a moment in prayer uh, before we move on to the third question. I just feel like each of you uh, just touched on things that were were so um, powerful, and I, I don't want to rush into the next the next question without really praying for those who have been hurt. And so, um, yeah. Gabriel, you can start us off in prayer as soon as you get done answering the question, and and then uh, Christopher, would you pray, and uh, and then Lauren and Haley, would you guys both pray as well? Yeah, so for, for this question, I actually had a, a way longer answer uh, that included like just making sure that you're not responding uh, from previous her, from, you know, your past or, or family issues and things like that. Uh, but at my home church on Sunday, actually, the Lord reminded me of something he revealed to me in January of this year. And so I have a simple answer to this question. And I think the way that we heal uh, from church community, I think is what the question as being, being heard in the church and Christian community. I think the way that we heal and uh, Christopher mentioned it is in community. I think the way that we heal from her in Christian community is in community. Uh, you know, reading out of that passage out of James, confess your sins to one another and that uh, we shall be healed. And so I think that the enemy, um, you know, separate us by putting shame and condemnation, right? Keeping things like hurt, keeping things like unconfessed sins in the sense of um, bitterness, uh, you know, from the hurt or from whatever situation. Uh, if we stay away from community, then it's, the process is going to be a lot longer. And I can probably say that every everybody that's been here that has been hurt at some point in time has eventually processed it with another brother and sister. 
So after processing it with the Lord, we eventually come to a brother and sister and say, hey, this is what I'm going through. This is what I've been feeling. Can you pray for me? Or can we pray together? Can we pray for this situation? Uh, same thing in, in, I think it's Matthew. Um, let's see real quick. It's Matthew 18, 19 to 20. Uh, the Lord talking about community with the disciple. He's talking about, hey, when uh, one or two agree on something on earth, it will be done in heaven. In the context of that, he's talking about a community situation. And so I really, really think that one of the ways to heal from uh, community hurt is in community. I love what you shared, Gabriel, and just even the just the consistency of what we see in, in scripture, looking at Matthew 18, and there was a dispute, there was offenses that had taken place. And Jesus uses as an opportunity to remind them how powerful their agreement is, um, even in the light of offenses. And um, I want to make sure that we're we're clear, you know, we talk about James in, in light of confessing sin, and and that by no means is to suggest that, you know, when someone's been hurt, that it's that it's uh, their fault. There's so many things that happen that that have nothing to do with the, the fault of the person who was hurt. But what I, I love that you're sharing is that there's power even when we're confessing sin done against us, right? So mm -hmm. when we talk about confessing sin, we automatically think about sin that we are guilty of. Uh, but I think there's a broader invitation there that you're pulling out, uh, Christopher, that you've shared as, as well. Uh, but to to know that there's room at the table of fellowship in community to say, this is what's been done to me and how that can break off the shame and break off uh, the 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 sense of feeling like, um, well, I can't talk about this. I can't I can't, you know, process this with anyone. And I, I, I completely yes. agree. I think that's one of the ways that the enemy keeps people isolated and keeps them from healing. And, and I know for, for us here at, at Garden City, it's so important that there's there's space, that there's an environment, um, even a, a culture, an expectation that, that we're allowed to, you know, go to one another and share what has, has happened to us so that we can heal, so that we can come back into alignment uh, with the Lord's desire. Well, as I, I mentioned, you know, I want us to spend some time kind of praying into this. I, I know this is something that is affecting a lot of people. Um, and I, I just think what you guys have shared has been uh, just so powerful. It's filled with wisdom in the heart of the Lord. And can we just lift up um, our community, those who have been hurt, those who are on their journey of, of, of healing before we move on? And so, Gabriel, would you pray? And then we'll kind of uh, bounce around to Christopher and then uh, Lauren and, and, and Haley. Yes, Father God, Lord, we, we, we come to you, Father. First of all, Lord, we just thank you. And God, we just give you all the glory and all the praise. And Father, we thank you, Lord, that, that as we mentioned in, in, in this Zoom call, Father, that community is part of your heart, Father, and you care for every individual person in that community, Father. You care for every heart, every emotion, every broken heart, Father, you care for, Lord. And so right now, Lord, I just ask you, Father, that you will start bringing healing, Lord, uh, to those places in our life, Father, that you use this, this conversation, Lord, just to bring a, a sense of refreshing, Father, to bring a sense, God, that uh, we are not going through this alone, Father. We don't have to go through this alone, Father. I thank you, Lord, that your word that is true and is your promises, Father, so that you will be in the midst, Lord, of our community, Father, that you find pleasure, Lord, in our communities, Lord, and I ask you, Lord, that as we, we pursue you, Lord, individually, Father, and in our community, Lord, that your presence will start healing those, those broken places, Father. In the same way that you told Peter, um, when you told Peter, once you're restored, come back and help your brother. I pray, Father, that once we are restored, Lord, we'll go back to our community, Lord, and we'll help our brothers and sisters that are going through some of the same situation, Father. We love you and we bless you, Lord, and we know that you want to do it in our life, Father. Amen. Lord, I pray for those who have been hurt uh, in the church and specifically by those in leadership. Uh, 
And I pray that you would begin to remove the cloud. I pray that you would bring clarity to their heart and bring a separation between uh, any conflation between uh, the person they were hurt by um, or the people they were hurt by in you so that they might be able to see you rightly for the kind and loving and merciful God that you are. I say even to those people now, be healed in the name of Jesus. 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 Lord, I pray um, that as they are processing this, that you would bring brothers and sisters along where they would feel safe to be able to share. And as my brother said, that the hurt that they received in community would be healed by community. That they would feel safe once again. And they could benefit again from the leadership that you have raised up. I bless our brothers and sisters for us in Jesus. Lord, I thank you for Garden City, God. I thank you, Jesus, for what you're doing here, God. I thank you that you have prepared a table for us to come to, and you father us so well, God. I thank you, God, that Garden City fights for what you fight for. We care for what you care for, Lord. I thank you even now for sons and daughters being restored into their identity, God. First and foremost, Lord, we thank you for your presence, God. We thank you, God, that you draw us. You lead us so well, Father. I thank you, God. I thank you, Lord, for what you're doing and what you're going to continue to do in Garden City, God. In Jesus' name, amen. Yeah, Jesus, I just thank you for your, uh, your consistent nature. Lord, I thank you that that you are our rock, you are our foundation in processing things that can feel like it that makes us swing to and fro. But but Lord, I just thank you and, and pray over this community that we would be rooted in you, that our eyes would be locked on you as you bring up our pain, that it wouldn't be locked on our hurt, but on you to trust you, to to unfold it, to unveil us and to heal us deeper still. Uh Lord, I just prophesy over our community an, an authenticity, uh, a trusting of your nature that as we see your nature, we would respond in an authentic, vulnerable response, Jesus, that it would be made known to us that, that you are the one that holds the depths of us, that you are the one that knit us together, that you know each thing that we need fulfilled, Lord, that each emotion that we have, you meet it fully. And then we get to go into your community or, or in partnership, Lord, that it happens in real time. I just pray for a real time communion with your spirit and your fullness as we engage with your community that you, you build around us, Lord, that we would trust it um, and, and risk with you and flow with you to to go from glory to glory and healing God. But I just thank you that you're tender and that you're kind. I ask Lord that you would unveil your character, reveal your character again and again and again, Lord, to anchor Garden City, to anchor this community in you as we heal and continue to heal, Lord. Yeah, thank you, Jesus. But we thank you that you are the example in all things, in all things, Lord. And we can see, we can uh, speak to you, we can come to you and ask you, how did you overcome the rejection, the betrayal, uh, the offenses brought against you? We we look to the cross, Lord, and we, we can just remind ourselves of your final words. Father, forgive them. Father, forgive them. Uh, would you give us your heart um, for mercy? Uh, mercy triumphs over judgment. Uh, we thank you, Lord, for that truth and what our community represent, Lord, what it looks like to choose forgiveness, uh, to choose radical mercy, not out of our own strength, uh, not, Lord Jesus, out of a, a, a performance-driven motivation, but because we've we've truly beheld you. We, we've never uh, stopped beholding the Lamb uh, who shows us what it looks like to trust the Father, um, even in the midst of pain. 
And uh, Lord, may that reality of who you are manifest, mature, um, and, and be such a, a, a tangible expression of uh, just what, what we experience um, in community together uh, right here, Lord Jesus, at Garden City. We, we thank you for that in advance. And we thank you for the breakthrough, the healing, the transformation. We thank you, Lord God, uh, for the ways that you will continue to lead, shepherd, care, um, and guide your people. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Thank you guys uh, so much. I just, I'm, I'm really confident that, that just the, the words that you've shared, the testimonies that you've shared um, are going to, to really help a lot of people. And I don't think we we ever shared this at the beginning of the call, but it's still not six in the morning yet as we are recording this. And so just uh, once again, just can't say enough how grateful I am for you guys um, so early in the morning to just pour out and touch on these topics that can be really difficult um, to process as you personally, again, walk through these things and continuously pour into others that have as well. Um, you know, as we've talked about what, what keeps us fighting, what keeps us showing up to the table after being hurt, we've talked about, you know, what that healing process looks like and, and what, what it requires of us to, to, to choose to heal and go on that restoration journey with the Lord. I think it's really important that we spend some time uh, talking about what we've gained from community. What are the blessings, the benefits uh, that we have gained from uh, being connected, really being invested in uh, Christian fellowship community in the local church. So uh, Lauren, would you uh, kick off this third question for us and just share what has it been like for you personally? How have you been uh, just blessed and what are the benefits that you've experienced from uh, Christian community? After processing with the Lord, I finally came down to one that he wanted me to share. <laughs> um, but I think it's so amazing um, to watch God really unfold so much in this. And it, there has been so many blessings. And the biggest one that I would say is I have learned how to be loved and to love. Um, and I think that order is really intentional because I was typing it out a couple of times and the Lord was like, no, you first learned how to be loved and then you loved. Um, but growing up, just a short background, just had a very quick childhood to grow up quickly. Um, and it really put a lot of walls up in that process. I was really self-motivated. I had to protect myself. My mindset was all about me. Um, and then so being brought into a church and a community, it really showed me how numb I was and how um, just shut up I was really. And um, when I was able to get into community, it's really what the Lord used to, to break down those walls and he was able to show me through that, that I don't have to always protect myself. I don't have to have the walls up, but the Lord showed me love. And then in return, I was able to show others love. And in that process, I, I had to receive love, not only from the Lord, but from others. And that was really the first time that I got to see that done well and to really feel what it felt like to be loved and to be cared for. Um, and it was just such a beautiful process even though it was hard and raw at times, but um, yeah, the Lord used community for that in me and brought healing, so much healing um, into now where I'm able to love well. And yeah, that's my, that's my part. <laughs> that's what I've gained. I love that response. And what a, what an incredible blessing, what an incredible benefit. You know, those, those realities are, are so central, so near to the heart of the Lord that we would, that we would live from that place of, uh, knowing that we are loved, learning how to receive love first so that we can give it to others. And um, I know it's been one of the greatest joys of my life to see uh, just what you have continued to invest, going all the way back to being that 19-year-old, you know, young woman uh, to the amazing woman of God that you are today, um, and just how intentional you've been. Um, and it's just, it's just been beautiful. Thank you for sharing that. And um, my prayer is that many others will have that same testimony, that same, you know, just, uh, reality. Um, I'll look at you tearing up. I see you. <laughs> Haley, would you share with us um, what you have received? And I know this is such a, uh, you know, uh, a large question, um, but what got, what got us put on your heart to share as it pertains to uh, the blessing and benefit that you've received from community? Yeah. Um, 
I think that when thinking about this, he he kept bringing me back to he the way that he has intricately made us and deposited pieces of himself in us. Um, and I think in community, when I'm honest with myself and I actually give myself to it, I gain so much of him when I give myself to deeply know those who have also given themselves to him. Um, I think that I just have seen such a rich field. Like if we're using an analogy of, of a garden, like when, when you come into someone else's garden with the Lord in relationship, you leave with different nutrients to come into yourself more and then also in the Lord more. And so I think that I have seen this blooming, this like permission to bloom into the fullness of who he's made me to be because I've seen other people do the same, but then also seen him as he has discipled and developed others to be the fullness of who he's made them to be. And so I think really simply, I gain so much of him when I submit and yield to those who have also gained him um, in a depth and genuine trust and, and freedom of relationship is there. Um, yeah. So I would probably say that. Amen. I mean, I love that. I, I think uh, the analogy I use a lot of times is just a diamond and how it has 88 facets and, and you need all 88 facets of a diamond to see the full brilliance, the full brightness. And uh, the Lord is, he's truly, uh, interwoven himself into each and every one of us. And the only way to fully receive him and to experience and enjoy him is to encounter uh, who he is um, and who he has revealed himself to be um, in, in community. And I uh, couldn't agree more um, with that. Thank you so much, um, Haley. Uh, Gabriel, would you share with us um, just what your journey has been like and some of the blessings and benefits that you've received from uh, community. Yeah, um, I feel like what I've gained out of community is it has been stability. Uh, I, I look at community as a, as a plan that has said deep root and community is the root. And even with the problems of life that comes, if that plan has said deep root, which will be community, that plan will not fall, right? And so not only does community helps me stay stable, but it, it brings stability uh, to my kids and to my, to my family. And so, you know, when I think about community, I think about community having uh, one vision or one goal. Uh, they have one, one language, right? And they have one culture. And what community does for me or what it has done for me from the beginning of my walk until now is that if, if my community see that I'm acting outside of my culture, my community will bring me back in. If my community see that I'm speaking a different language, my community will bring me back in. If my community sees that, hey, that doesn't align with the vision of our, of our community, my community will bring me back in. But it not only does that to me, it does it to my children, right? So if something happens to me or something happened in my relationship with my wife, many of you guys will reach out to my children and say, hey, they might be going through something, but you guys are stable because you guys have a community. So if you need anything, hit me up, call me. Text me, I'm a text away, I can pick you up. And so community has, you know, really, really gave us stability, but it's not also what we have gained out of community, but what we keep gaining out of community every That's single good. time we meet. I mean, I just heard Haley's prayer and I'm, I'm like, I'm done with this Zoom, I wanna cry. I mean, <laughs> you know, she, she is praying and what I get out of what she's saying is, is being vulnerable. And I'm like, oh my gosh, I want to be vulnerable, Lord, you know? And, and so I'm gaining that even out of community right now. You know, you look at a crystal friend, you see his passion for evangelism and discipleship. And I can mimic that and I can desire that and inspire that. You know, you see Pastor Gerald and you see his passion 
unapologetic for the Lord and you're like, forget everybody, you know, Jesus, <laughs> you know, uh, even as Lauren is talking and she's sharing about, about her upbringing, you know, I'm like, oh my goodness, that's why I have responded to situations that way because I have a similar upbringing. So it's not what we have gained, but what we actually gain in the present time, every time we come into community, uh, we gain something. And so, I mean, it's such a blessing. There isn't a, a special anointing that comes to our life when we are in community. I'm done. You guys can tell I'm excited. <laughs> <laughs> you should be our campus pastor or something, since you're since you're so passionate about community and fellowship. Oh, wait, you are. Praise God. Praise the Lord. Uh, I couldn't agree more, Gabriel. And even as you shared there at the end, just the, the corporate anointing that the Lord has preserved for community. We think about Psalm 133. Right. And, and the invitation that is given in that psalm to see the blessing, the anointing that God has looked to place upon uh, the corporate expression um, of his people. Um, it, it's special. And I, and I love the emphasis that it's not just past tense, you know, past tense, something that we've gained and it's and it's over. But the, the, the reoccurring nature of blessing and benefit that comes from community that was that was powerful. Thank you so much, Gabriel. Christopher, would you uh, wrap us up with this with this question uh, before uh, we land the plane with the last one? Yeah, my answer is pretty simple. It's family. Um, as someone who was an only child and <clears throat> grew up uh, with a single mom raising me who worked a lot, I didn't have anyone to do life with. I had some amazing extended family members who lived in the city and, and loved me, but no one to do life with on a day-to-day -day basis and who really knew what was going on in my life. Um, and now I have a huge community of people that are more than friends, they're family. They're people who show our family love, pray for us when we're struggling, even help bring correction into my life, similar to what Gabriel said. Uh, it makes me, every time I go to church um, and I'm around the community of God, it makes me think about a family reunion. I've never been to one because I didn't have one, um, but I understand the concept. And the concept is you go and you see all these people that you're related to. Um, and you know that they're your family, but they're not yet their, your friends. And so at a family reunion, now you're beginning to meet and get to know these people who you have this blood relationship with. But now I've got to get to know you as an individual. And it's just being in the community of God, you have your uh, brothers and sisters all around you and it's that opportunity to say oh we have a deep connection already now let's get to grow and be friends i love that picture um, of a family reunion family becoming friends and just that we get to lean into that um, really unending eternally what we are part of is is not limited to time and space it's not limited to you know just just one season, uh, but we are part of an eternal family. And that that invitation to enjoy one another, that invitation to, to really grow fond of one another, to build friendship. And um, I know we've talked about it from day one, but um, it's a part of why we value the living room and the kitchen table so much. And, and all of what you know, we are blessed to be able to do and be a part of and experience through the mission of Garden City, it really has been the living room and the kitchen table that has uh, kept us, that has, uh, I believe, fueled and, and motivated so much of what we do and how we do it. And I'm grateful for that to continue, uh, really grateful for that to continue. Um, and that's actually a great segue to lead us to the last part of our time. Um, I don't know what we were thinking. Uh, I'll, I'll put it on me. I don't know what I was thinking, thinking that we could uh, add uh, this portion of the panel to our, our Sunday morning message um, in the time that we had. Uh, so the Lord does all things well. He knew the whole time that we were going to uh, be able to share this post message over the Zoom call. Um, but just it's been so rich. And as we've kind of talked through principles that have uh, really encouraged hearts uh, to keep fighting for community after we've been hurt, to heal 
uh, from hurt that has been experienced in community uh, with the understanding that there's this ongoing invitation uh, to expect blessing and benefit from community. I, I'd love for us to uh, wrap our time up today um, with just kind of sharing vision uh, as leaders. You guys are all leaders um, at Garden City. You're you're truly investing, building, shaping uh, the community in so many ways. I, I just think it'd be so powerful <clears throat> for uh, individuals to hear what. where do you want to see Garden City grow? What are you hopeful for? What are you encouraged um, by when it comes to uh, where we're going, and specifically at Garden City, uh, what what you see the Lord doing um, in in our community. So, uh, Lauren, would you just share with us what's been on your heart when you think about the vision of community um, at Garden City, where we're going? Yeah, I think really just to to sum it up and to be quick, I think it would be just a more mature version of community that people would really understand the full meaning of community and it would produce a mature community produces mature people. And I think if we can live from that instead of it just being an idea um, and I want to be a church where we are so unified that we truly can stand and do it together in a place where people will look at Garden City and be like, how are they doing that? I want that. That's the example and really for Columbus, that we would be that example for Columbus. And it's crazy. It's only been three years, but I feel like it's already happening. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much, Lauren. Haley, what do you see as we move forward and what is a part of your heart and vision for uh, community uh, through Garden City? Yeah, I think that what I'm excited for is and just really hoping for is to see us grow and our faith in Jesus to hold us as we risk for community. I think we talk about it and and it is good. It is it is fun. It is life-giving. But even through the lens of us talking about how do you heal? How do you do this? Making a decision comes with a risk. And I just, I want to see our community grow in the faith to trust Jesus with our risks, to trust Jesus with our heart um, that we will choose something honestly and and give ourselves to it deeply because we trust him. Um, and so I, I'm just really hopeful for that, even, even for myself and disciple making. I've been praying over myself that I, again, would, would come with increased faith to trust Jesus, to that when Holy Spirit prompts, I like do dive deep with someone because I'm confident in the in, in my pursuit of the fully alive version of me that I have something to give and that this person has something to give and not for gain, not for transaction, but but with confidence to deeply love and deeply know. Um, and so I've been really hopeful for that, that we would would love freely and without bounds and yield to extend our tent. Um, and even the extending of tent, knowing that it will be costly, but but a cost of joy and faith that Jesus is worth a risk um, of increase. Amen. Amen. Gabriel, what is it that you see as we move forward? What's a part of uh, just your vision for where we're going, um, the Garden City pertaining to community? Yeah. Uh, first of all, I, will, I would like to say that um, first of all, I want to thank you and, and Pastor Lauren uh, for how intentional you guys has been with community. Uh, I can't tell you guys the amount of time uh, that I talk to new people uh, that come through the church door and they say, well, as soon as I come through this door, I feel loved, you know, and you guys have, have created a culture of not uh, condemnation and, and, and no religion and not, not guilt, uh, but a family. So I want to thank you guys for that. And I, I really think it's something that, that Garden City does very well. Uh, I would like to see just that same expression, just being large, you know, I would like the table to get even bigger. You know, I think that after, you know, building a community for yourself, um, you can get comfortable in that community. This is my group, this is my circle, and I've worked so hard to make it to where we're at. And so I'm going to stay here and then we don't bring other people in. Uh, and so I would like to see for us to stretch ourselves 
And even after building our community and being in a place of, of comfortability, bring somebody else in and, and try to go deep with them and, and, and bring them into that community that, that we work hard for. Amen, brother. I'm excited to hear you, just more of your heart for that. And um, I believe that's a, a very intentional, um, you know, uh, aspect of, of what it looks like uh, to to move with the Lord is to say, how do we make more space uh, for what we're experiencing so that others can experience it too? Thank you, Gabriel. Christopher, what has been on your heart as you think about where we're going and what are some of the things that you want to see, uh, vision that you have for the future of community at, at Garden City? Yeah, so much has already been said, and so I don't necessarily have anything new I want to add, but I'd like to give one uh tangible thing and one intangible thing. Uh, the tangible thing is simply to take something that's already been said and put it into practice. Um, James 2.26 talks about faith without works being dead, but there's a passage from Matthew that I want to read that I feel is even weightier. Uh, this is Matthew 25 through 29. I'm sorry, 25, 29. It says, to those who use well what they are given, even more will be given, and they will have an abundance. But from those who do nothing, even what little they have will be taken away. And so if we want more of what God has already given us and more of what we're already tasting, we have to take some of these things that um, Haley said, that Gabriel said, that Lorna said, and put it into practice. Um, and that leads just into my intangible thing is um, just the shift in mindset. I talked earlier about how we need community to accomplish the mission. But Lauren said something that's even better. And I would say even a little bit more biblical. She said community is the mission. And if we have a shift that says uh, the goal is not just salvation. The goal is not just the glory of God. And I, I, I talk a lot about those two things and I highly value them. But if we look at John 17 and Jesus's prayer and we say the goal is also unified community, um, I think all these things will come into play. Amen. It's so rich. You know, when we think about just Paul's exhortation that we've been given the ministry of reconciliation second corinthians chapter five you know he he restores and reconciles us that we may be agents by which and through which he restores and reconciles others and uh, what a what a vision the lord has given us um, what a mission the lord has given us uh, to see ourselves as those ministers servants of uh, reconciled restored family only through the name the blood the cross the resurrection um, of Jesus. You know, I want to just kind of close out by sharing a, a couple of words and um, just that kind of help define what, what I'm believing for. Uh, you know, when I think about our community, I, I believe that that we are on the brink of entering into a, a point of no return where the gospel itself, the person of Jesus and the presence of Jesus is the undeniable glue that holds us together, that binds us together, that no matter uh, what part of our ministry people are experiencing, that their testimony would be, it is truly the good news of Jesus Christ. It is the person of Jesus. It just seems no matter you know where I connect here at Garden City, everyone has such a clear, vibrant and, and just, just tangible grip of the beauty of the Lord and conversation and serving together and uh, the, the, the sermons, whatever it may be, the, 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 the services, uh, the, the, the homes that I'm going to, the living rooms and kitchen tables I'm sitting at. I'm surrounded by people who are so convinced of the beauty and worth of Jesus, the gospel of Jesus Christ. In, in his presence. And uh, I believe as we lean into that, um, we are talking about, you know, obedience to the great commandment and the great commission to love God and love people, to see uh, disciples made in the kingdom advanced. When, when those are the things that are truly, you know, binding us together, I, I believe that we're going to experience everything else uh, that has been talked about and, and uh, 
that's going to be what's what's needed uh, to experience the, the fruit um, and that what we're believing for for the future. So let's let's pray as we as we close, Lord. We just thank you for uh, this this opportunity. Lord, to dive into your word, to see what the scripture says about faith and fellowship in the areas of, of doctrine, community, and mission. Um, again, I thank you, Lord Jesus, for Lauren, for Haley, for Gabriel, for Christopher, giving of themselves, sharing their heart, pouring out their heart, Lord, and just being honest and raw, vulnerable, but full of hope uh, for what it is that you are worthy of uh, when it comes to community. Uh, thank you for every every uh, just piece of, of wisdom, every practical invitation, the insight. Thank you for the revelation. Thank you for the anointing uh, that is on their lives and, and that they have now imparted into our community. And we just thank you in advance for the fruit, uh, the increase uh, that is going to come. Thank you for the grace needed to respond in obedience, to make changes, to make adjustments. Uh, individually and corporately. And uh, Lord, as I've already shared, I, I pray that what, what really binds us together as we continue this path is the revelation of who you are. We ask for the spirit of wisdom and revelation and the knowledge of you, that it would be undeniable in our community, that it's it's your presence, it's your person. It is coming to the table to see you, to behold you, to be made like you, to, to continue to respond in obedience uh, to everything you've invited us into with joy and with passion, with great zeal, uh, Lord, and, and motivated by love, loving you, loving people, and knowing that it's your kingdom, your gospel alone that can transform the world and is transforming the world. And we have a role to play. God, continue to have your way. Thank you for Garden City. Thank you again for this series and the way it's going to inform us as we move forward. And we just again pray that you would continue to be exalted and that you would receive what you are worthy of, that your inheritance, Lord, that your reward uh, would be received in us. We love you, Lord, and we give you all the praise. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Thank you guys so much. And I'm uh, really looking forward to the way that this additional content is going to impact our community um, as we move forward together. Love you guys. God bless. Bye.